Not a bad way to start your day, 14 coffees. I'll do that. Dash along the way to my two catering runs today. So let's make some money. And I'm going to talk to you guys about pre-scheduling. This is the second pickup, a little cookie cookie action. And how this is a game changer. I don't know what this constitutes as catering, but I'll take it. I'm in my happy place this morning, y'all. And right after we dropped off those cookies, we got an $11 DoorDash. Easy money. Man, I never like putting away them trucks, man. Yeah, I know. You guys got a freezer here, right? We got the walk-in right You here. got the walk-in refrigerator and freezer? No, it's just a fridge. Just a fridge, yeah. Yeah. How many piece truck today? How many pieces? What's up? How big is the truck? How many pieces? Uh, it's not too big of one. I mean, it's the Monday truck. We'll get another one Thursday. That'd be pretty big for the weekend. Welcome back to Mr. Bet on You. It's uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been done with work for couple of hours now and I want to talk about my day you guys saw some of what I've done I want to talk about how I think I've been wrong and I'm late to the bus late to the bus and I was on that bus a different bus but there was a better one and I was late to it and I missed it and that bus had better AC it was cleaner the seats were a little bit nicer let's talk so I did the two caterings this morning. Um, I'm going to put some information here. Uh, deliver that. Really liking this app. Uh, I mean, until something bad happens, I'm going to like it. And even when something bad happens, it's like, eh, it's gig work. I had two and I was able to take both of them. That won't always align up, but I'm going to show you the route here. I think in the app is called a plan. Like, you know, I had a pickup at 1015. I drove it. Uh, and then I was a eight minute car ride. After the first drop off to the second pickup, which was just some cookies, and then boom, right back to my area where I live, and then boom, picked up an eleven dollar DoorDash and some change. And before that, I dashed along the way to the fourteen dollar coffee one, hundred and five dollars minimum. I had a little bit of extra money with the mileage and the pay, so the deliver that base pay and the commissions or whatever were a little bit better. Um, one hundred and five bucks in two hours, easy work. Well, that might not always happen, but I've had a, a catering every day the last two weeks. The, the last two weeks almost, except for yesterday. So every day I had at least one last week, and then I didn't get one yesterday. I got two today. I haven't seen one yet today for tomorrow that I was able to accept. But I was late to the bus. I can still make blue money with DoorDash, but I like having something pre-scheduled. And I want to challenge you guys right now to figure out what that is. Whether that's a catering app, a different kind of app, a laundry app, or this or that, there's a lot of there's opportunities out there for you. I think a lot of us get comfortable. Now I do other things besides just the delivery stuff, and you guys know that. So I'm I I get uncomfortable in different ways. But when it comes to making money with the on-demand apps, it's really easy just to make decent money with DoorDash or with Instacart, or maybe it's Uber or maybe it's Rideshare, or maybe it's Spark. Get you on some pre-scheduled runs. A lot of you guys said you've signed up or you tried to sign up for certain apps and there's a waiting list or you can't get on or Pedro, I've had this app for a couple of months. I haven't seen anything or I've only done one app. Sure, your market might not be able to have the volume and sustain a lot of catering people or whatever. Find what in your market is going to give you something to start your day off so that you're not waiting on or like like crossing your fingers for when you turn an app on, whichever app you work. And I hope customers tip today. That's basically what it is. We need tips because the base pay on none of these apps is going to be good enough. So we're, we're really relying upon somebody having a need for food and you're waiting on demand. Whereas the Deliver That and some of these other apps that I'll be trying out to show you guys the experience, right? And for me, I want to get home quicker, which is great. When you have a pre-schedule, it's just it's guaranteed money. You're starting your day off and you could plan your day around it, whether it's like I did today. Dash along the way, $14 coffee run, right into the area where I needed to be. Everything lined up perfectly. Think about the night before or the day before, how you want the following day to go. All right, I want to pre-schedule this. I want to have this. I want to have that. I want to start my day with this particular client or a person. I'm personal shopping for somebody or I'm doing a personal run on a rideshare app. I'm taking somebody to the airport, whatever, like personal clients. Let's start thinking outside that box. And I've talked about these kind of things before, but I want to continue to, to show you guys my experience with the, the catering app 
so that I can set my day up like this. And not every day is going to happen like that. There also there needs to be a need and demand on the catering side or personal shopping side or personal rideshare side. There always has to be a demand. But if you could be thinking the day ahead, a couple days ahead, so you're setting up your week, your next day, it's going to allow you to start off just on a more positive note. I know I've got a $30 order when I wake up, a $50 run. Hey, I know I've got a $25 order to start my day. So I'm not waiting on DoorDash to send me a $5 or $6, whatever. That could be good. Maybe that's what's normal in your market. But how do we think a little bit bigger? How do we say, I'm making 15 bucks an hour, Pedro? Okay, how do we push that to 20? Pedro, I'm making 20. How do I push that to 25 for the time that you're giving? How do we start our day $5 off better every time that you're, every hour that you're out there? And compound that over your day. So pretty solid day to day. And it's, when I can get home earlier and also accomplish other things while I'm making money, I love it. I'm not always going to have those days. It's gig work. It, it, you're going to have some struggles here and there. Um, but for me, it's, it's it just feels better. It feels good. Now, I know I can make similar money with just DoorDash, but I'm going to have to do more. I'm going to have to do more things, probably service more customers, Right. And maybe sometimes I'm going to drive a little bit more. Sometimes I'm going to drive a little bit less. But like we should be looking at things from a higher valuation point. We should be valuing our time a little bit more. And I know these apps, DoorDash and Uber, the base pays low and we need customers to tip. But figure out what other apps or opportunities are just giving you more respect when it comes from a, a base pay standpoint or an opportunity standpoint that's a little more lucrative. So you're not so dependent on the on-demand apps because the on-demand apps aren't going anywhere. There's still value and there's still money to be made. These apps aren't dead. But how can you start your day off differently if you're not achieving the result you want with the on-demand DoorDash apps? So remember on Sunday, we will have UDM Delivers, UDM will be on the show Sunday night. We're going to talk about things that he was talking about last year and how a lot more people are coming on board. He was ahead of the curb. So I'm going to give him some credit for that, right, on Sunday. But then also, what else is he looking at? We're going to put our brains together. I got some ideas. I want to hear what he has to say. How can we not be as impacted by a slow demand, a saturation or whatever, and how can we start taking power back into our own hands? So I know a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are complaining. A lot of people are struggling out there. But I believe the reason you see people like UDM, myself, because even when out the catering, I was adapting last year, but in a different way. We ain't struggling. And many other of you guys aren't struggling, but some are. So how can we not feel like that? You're struggling now in 2024, almost at the halfway point. How do we not feel like how you're feeling right now halfway point in 2025. We're going to talk about that on Sunday. How can we start making some things happen now? Planting some seeds so that next year you have a flower to look at versus just an empty pot that makes you feel depressed and you're still working the same apps and doing the same thing. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <music>